All right, today we're going to talk about the uh, third and basically an algebra of one final type of graph of linear equation, so an equation that makes a line. This is called standard form. The thing about standard form is it has x and y on the same side. Now, if you remember back a couple of the other things we've done, we've done slope intercept. In this one, you have to know what the intercept, where it connects to the y-axis. And then you know the slope is in front of the x. I don't know why I circled the x here. I should have just done the m. Uh, another type that we dealt with was point slope. In this case, we would know uh, one point, and we change the signs here to make it x1, y1. And then we'd uh, put the slope right here. Now, standard form is a little different. When you use standard form, what you have, uh, what you can find very quickly is where they actually intercept. Uh, intersect, I'm sorry, with the uh, the axis. So you're looking for the x and y intercepts. So let's take a look at the types of problems you'll be dealing with. It, this really works well to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. All we have to do to find the y-intercept, which is of course if we're on a graph, the y-intercept would be wherever it falls kind of on this line here. Where does it cross? And all we need to do to do that is just to plug in a value for x where x is equal to 0. Because at this point, on the y-axis, all of the x terms will be 0. So this will be 0, 3, and maybe down here is 0, negative 2, whatever. But the reality is, on the y-axis, the x values are 0. So we're just going to rewrite this equation to find y by doing 3 and plugging in 0 right here. And then I'm just going to solve it like a normal equation. So I'm going to draw my line. 3 times 0 is 0. Bring down 4y equals 24. Divide by 4. y is equal to 6. So that's my y-intercept. If I need to find my x-intercept, here's the x-axis here on my graph. At these, in these scenarios, the y's are always 0. So this could be uh, 2, 0. Down here, maybe negative 3, 0. Whatever. So the y's are always 0. So if I need to find the y um, intercept, or the x-intercept, I'm sorry, what I'm going to do is plug a 0 in for y and solve the problem just like I'd be solving a basic equation. So I do 3x three, three plus 4, and remember I'm going to make that y a 0, equals 24. So you solve it, 3x equals 24, uh, divide by 3, I don't know why I put x there, x is equal to 8. So when I need to find my x-intercept and my y-intercept, all I need to do is say that x is equal to um, 8 and y is equal to 6. And those are my two answers that I need to have. Now, from there, we're going to go into how do I graph it, or what do I do to graph that type of equation. When I graph, I broke out two types here. There's a couple of them that uh, one that doesn't have anything in front of the x, or it should have a 1 there, but it doesn't. And the other where they have just numbers. It's real simple to graph. All I need to do is find the x and y intercepts. So the first situation I'm going to do is plug in a 0 for x, which would eliminate that term completely. And the other one I'm going to solve will give me, uh, I'm going to put a 0 in for y, which would make it x is equal to negative 2. So the x part is done. To solve this one, I need to divide by negative 2 y is equal to negative 1. So those are my x and y intercepts. Sorry, that's negative 2, so this should be positive 1. I knew that seemed weird. So in order to graph them, all I have to do is go on the actual graph itself. Uh, x is negative 2 is right here. y is 1 is right here. So I just make those two points, connect the dots together. And that's all I have to do. It's really simple. Uh, the issue there, I guess, might be that the x has a 1 in front of it, and you kind of have to remember that to be the case. But it's really not that complicated. Let's look at the other one. The 2x plus 5y equals 20. In this situation, I need to make one statement where I plug a 0 in for x, which would make the 2x go away. So I have 5y is equal to 20. On the other side, I'm going to plug in a 0 for y, which would make the y term go away. 2x equals 20. I'm going to divide by 2. x is equal to 10. I could divide by 5 over here. y is equal to 4. So my graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Make a dot right there for the y. Right here, connect the dots together. 
Very simple. I mean, it's not like it's brain surgery. All you have to do is make sure that that uh, is the case. There is one situation, by the way, where this doesn't work. You can't use the intercepts method. We'll talk about it in uh, just a minute about when that time would be. Actually, let's just go ahead and talk about it. There is a situation where this doesn't work. If I have 5x plus 10y equals 0. This is the key part right there. If it's equal to 0, it doesn't work. You can't use the intercepts method. So, like, say I would do uh, plug a 0 in for x, I'd get 10y equals 0, and on the other side I'd get 5x equals 0. Well, x equals 0, and y also equals 0. In this situation, you can't make a graph because it just tells you to make a dot right there. That's not helpful at all. In that case, what I need to do is convert it into slope intercept form or something else. All you'd have to do is kind of move the x over and I think you'd be in good shape. Let me see if I can clean out a couple things and I'll show you what I mean by changing it into that form. Now as long as it's equal to a number, you're probably in good shape. It works pretty well. Sometimes you'll get annoying fractions, but that's not anything that you can't you know, completely get rid of. So let me just do the 5x plus 10y thing real fast, and I'll show you how to convert it into slope-intercept form. I wasn't actually thinking about this when I made this flip chart, so I apologize for not covering it better. Um, draw your line. You're going to move the 5x over, so subtract 5x. 10y is equal to negative 5x, and you don't even need the plus 0 because you know it's going to cross at the origin. Divide by 10 y is equal to negative one half x. So to graph it, I go on the graph. I already know that it's plus zero, so I just do a dot right here, and then I'd go uh, down one over two, make the dot, and then it's this way. But without changing it into slope-intercept form, I really can't tell what the thing's going to do. So if you have it equal to zero, don't leave it in that form. Make sure you move on. Now, let's talk about horizontal and vertical lines. Sometimes, and it's sort of related to standard form, it's almost like they just give you the intercept. On occasion, you will get a graph that doesn't have uh, both of the x and y. It'll just have one or the other. I know I'm tripping over my words today, but I am. It is what it is. Um, when I have x is equal to 3, what that means is I need to go on the x-axis and make a dot at the 3. So when I have my graph, I'm going to go, because it says positive 3 here, to 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to make a dot. Now, if you just have one letter, what you end up with is a straight line. It's either going to be across or up and down. So it's either a zero slope or an undefined slope. You basically just want to make the line perpendicular to the axis that it's on. So since the axis is going this way, the line has to go straight up and down. And that's all you have to do. By the way, if you're graphing in a calculator in a few days, it doesn't really work that well trying to do it that way. On the flip side, if you have y is equal to negative 5, on my y-axis, I go down to negative 5 and I make a dot. Now, if I draw the line up and down, you wouldn't really be able to see it because it uh, would just look like the axis. So you want to make sure that you draw a line that you can see just like that. Real simple uh, to do horizontal and vertical lines. Just wanted to show them to you because they do kind of pop up a lot at inconvenient times. And the last thing, transforming things into standard form. Sometimes you have to go from uh, slope-intercept to standard or vice versa. We talked about how to go from standard to slope-intercept. So let's go back. The key issue here is to make sure that you get your um, x and y on the same side. Generally, you want to kind of sort of in a way do your best to make sure that uh, your x term is positive. So you don't want to move it so your x term becomes negative. So let's just draw the line here. You want to get your x term to be positive so moving it over is going to be really annoying. So I'm going to move the y over I guess. You could do that. So let's subtract. Let's move the 5 over first. Subtract 5 from both sides. So you end up with y minus 5 is equal to 2x. And now to get the uh, y by itself, I need to subtract, or the negative 5 alone, subtract y. 2x minus y equals negative 5. And if you want to flip it around so it looks pretty, just like that. You want to try to make that x positive. In most cases, it just looks nicer, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm an old-fashioned type of dude. If not, I mean, you could uh, 
just pull the x over and you get negative 2x plus y equals positive 5, but it is what it is. I tend to put the x positive. I'm just that way. Now, uh, for the next one, you end up with this fraction. Standard form does not have fractions, so we need to get rid of it. And what we're going to do to get rid of the 1 fourth is to multiply everything by 4, because 1 fourth times 4 is equal to positive 1. So we're trying to get rid of the fraction altogether. The problem is if I do it by one of these terms, I have to do it by all three of those terms. So I can't just sit there and hope for the best. So instead, I'm going to do 4 times y equals 4 times 1 fourth x minus 2. So I have the uh, 4 times 1 fourth gives me x, 4 times negative 2 gives me minus 8. I have the 4y there. I'm going to move this x over, so minus x, negative x plus 4y is equal to negative 8. That's one where I just left the uh, x negative there, and you know, there's no real major issue against it, so I, I just think it's kind of, in some cases it looks a little bit weird. And by the way, if you want to have the x positive and flip it around, just change all the signs x minus 4y equals 8 gives you the same thing. And you make sure that you multiply the whatever. If it was 1 fifth, you'd multiply everything times 5. If it's 1 seventh, multiply the everything by 7. The last type is the point slope form. First thing I'm going to do is work it out. 4 times x, uh, negative 1 times 4, that's minus 4. Now remember, I'm trying to get x and y on the same side. So I'm going to move the y over. 3 4x minus y minus 4. Now I need to move the minus 4 over, so I'm going to add 4. 4x minus y equals 7, and then I'm going to leave it as 4x minus y equals 7. So it looks in that nice, pretty form where x is first and then y, and it'll all get you to the same place anyway because you're just going to set up uh, where they cross. So try to put x first and then y make it positive make it all pretty it's a really simple way to do standard form standard form is really not that hard anyway so good luck on your assignment i think you'll do fine